awesome worship, and I'm so thankful to be able to come into this home with so many believers and be able to worship the one true king. That's something that I'll never take for granted, and I just appreciate. I know Paul's not here, but Monica, I don't know where she's at, but I just want to thank them. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm excited. Um, I've been praying and seeking the Lord on, like, what really he wants me to share um, exactly this um, with me talking, because I have a lot to my story. Um, before salvation, but I felt like the Lord was like, you know, I want you to share what I delivered you from after salvation. So mm -hmm. to kind of explain, because I'm going to be using that word deliverance a lot here, um, I searched the definition of deliverance, and the first definition that came up was the action of being rescued or set free. Mm -hmm. The second definition was a formal or authorita authoritative utterance. So um, I wanted to share that because I'm going to be talking about my deliverance testimony of God delivering me. Um, to kind of give a backstory into my life, um, I, growing up, I grew up, you know, in a godly uh, household and everything. <laughs> I can't look at you, you're crying, it makes me look sad. But anyway, you're awesome, like, you're wrong, but it makes me sad. Okay, anyway. Okay. Well, not sad, it just gets me emotional. But, <laughs> but anyways, so I grew up in a godly household, but um, sadly, I, you know, kind of took my own path and turned against my family and moved out of the house. Within four days of moving out of the house, um, uh, I moved up towards Nakula, and I was coming down the falls one morning on my way to work. Um, had a lot of hate in my heart towards a lot of people, and I'm just being real and raw with y'all. Um, I had life, hated everything in it. Um, I was coming down the Nakula mountain, and I drove a six shift at the time, and if any of you know what that's like, you have to go in neutral sometimes because it's downhill because, well, I mean, you said gas in that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like coasting, and I looked down to make sure I was in neutral, and I looked back up, and I was on the other side of the mountain. Um, and it scared me, so I overturned my wheel, and I just started flipping and flying. And I just remember, like, just screaming and not understanding what's going on, but just a lot of emotions, you know, that's a scary thing to be in. But the car finally stopped, and I just remember being like, God, I don't believe in you. I don't want anything to do with you. But right now, I feel like there's no way out of this car, and I feel like I'm either going to die or I'm going to be paralyzed one. Yeah. And I was just like, God, if you're real, I just need a miracle. I need something. I need you to get me out of this car. Um, it was very scary because I was hurting very bad my neck and back and I honestly, like I said, I just had it in my head, I, I'm going to be paralyzed, like there's no way out of this car. Um, long story short, I got to the hospital, you know, a lot goes on when you're in the hospital. As soon as you get there and something traumatic like that, you have a lot of people come up to you, you know, what's your name, your date of birth, you know, just asking so many questions, move your right arm, move your left arm, can you wiggle your toes, so many things. And I just remember, like, my brain couldn't stop going, and I was just like, is this going to end? Like, I had no peace. I, it just in my head, I was like, what am I doing in my life? What am I doing? So finally, um, eventually they got me rolled back to, um, to get a scan down on my body, and um, I was in a neck brace at this point, you know, so I couldn't see. All I could see was up, laying in that hospital bed. But as they were rolling me back, I was holding on to a hand, and I thought, oh, my daddy got here, you know, I, I, it's, my, it's my daddy now. I kind of glanced down my eyes like that, and nobody was there. And I just gripped on with that hand, and I had peace. Like, I never can explain. Amen. And I knew within that moment that I was holding wow. the presence of the Lord. Wow. And I stand here today in awe of still that, that story. No matter how many times I say it, I get so emotional because I had such a supernatural encounter with God. And I, wanna, I wanted to kind of make that known because something Jacob said a couple weeks ago, he was talking about Judas and how, Judas saw the signs and wonders of, of Jesus, literally walked with him, but he still betrayed him. Yeah. After my wreck, I had that supernatural encounter with him. But sadly, once I got recovered, um, I ended up breaking like C4 to T2 of my spine, of my neck. I fractured a rib and tore a ligament going down through my arm. Um, two months of recovery. For all, any of y'all who know a neck and back surgery, that's amazing. That's a testimony in itself that yeah. I recovered that fast. Um, but after that, after seeing that sign and wonder, I began to fall off and fall off and just run because I knew from the upbringing I had, I knew that salvation isn't just this prayer you pray. Like you have to like yes. literally surrender your life to Jesus. Like Amen. he has to come in and, and, and start to work in you and stuff. And I that's wasn't good. ready for that. Yeah, that's good. I was like, I just almost died. Like, do I really like, he's real, but I've got time, you know, I'll get saved later on. You know, I'll, I'll kind of live it up for now. And sadly I fell down a track of, you know, partying, doing whatever I felt like I wanted to do to live, to cope with back pain, you know, sometimes alcohol here and there, I'm hurting, let's go to that, 
things that I hate to even say, but I'm here to be real and raw with y'all yeah. because I know that God is going to reach somebody through this testimony. That's right. But, you know, you begin to use other things to cope with something. Yeah. And it doesn't matter about that supernatural experience because if you still do not believe in your heart and you still do not want to truly follow after him, like, you're not his. Yeah. And that's what he Amen. was telling me. Like, you're, 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 not, you're not mine. Like, you have to lay this down yeah. and give it to me. I don't want to. I don't know about that. You know, this alcohol sound better. Or these friends sound better. Or all this and that just sounded better, you know. But the thing about it was I couldn't deny he was real at that point. Yeah. I knew he was. I experienced him supernaturally. Um, long story short, that happened in May 16th of 2021. Um, and then come around to February 2022, so this time last year, I began, um, well, the end of January, I began to just feel like the Spirit was just drawing me. Like, I need to give it all up. Like, my relationships, I was in everything. I've got to give this up. He's real and no better, no better, you know, than the present to, to commit your life to the Lord. Yeah. But what I look back now, realizing as I was praying, God, you know, how do I want to give this message and explain that? What I began to realize was I think that after, no, I don't think, I know, after my car wreck and after that instance, I was trying to be, to start cleaning myself up before I came to the Lord, but it, what it yeah. ended up doing was creating a bigger mess and causing mm-hmm. me to That's party good. and do all this other stuff that I thought was more important because the only person that can clean you up is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It don't matter, like, and I don't know if that's for somebody here or not, but maybe you've been wanting to get saved, but you feel like you've got to you know, get cleaned up first. You don't. He does the cleaning. No. But you have, to let, you have to let him do that yeah. cleaning. That's good. So eventually, February, um, I got uh, saved. And I gave my life to the Lord, and mm-hmm. that still was the best decision I've ever made. Yeah. But what he began to do was walk with me and say, okay, now that you're mine, I'm going to show you. I'm going to help you clean this up. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to clean up this mess. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, God, long story short, I, I just started being like, you know, okay, but in order for you to have to clean up a mess, like, you have to see it. Like, it has to come to the yes, surface. Yes, that's so good. So God was bringing this stuff to the surface, saying, like, hey, like, let's deal with this. Like, you've done this. You've opened this door. Like, like let me help you. Let me let me deliver you. Let me set you free from this. Mm-hmm. And what I was doing was saying, I don't want to deal with that. I, I don't, God. Like, I really don't. I don't know how to deal with all this, all these things that I've done. I can't. I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, what happens when you begin to, like I said, try to clean up that mess? Or when you, when you try to do it, it just creates a bigger mess. But what I did was I just shoved it under the rug. I yeah. didn't even, like, clean it up. I didn't try to do any of that. I just said, I just don't want to talk about that, God. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. So what begins to happen when you don't deal with what God's telling you to deal with, you end up falling back into the same sin and complexity and doing different things here and there. Yes. Just compromising. That's so good. Yeah. And good. you just can't do that. Anyways, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just telling y'all, like, I'm going to live a testimony to that. Just let God set you free. But anyways, um, I'm going to read a couple of verses. Um in Ephesians 4, if anybody wants to turn there, if you just want to hear me. Um, I'm going to start with verse 21. Um, it says, Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like, like God, truly righteous and holy. Stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the enemy. Yeah. So even with just, you know, and this is talking about anger gives a foothold. But think about all the times that we just, like, sin and compromise here and there, how much more of a foothold that gives the enemy. Yeah. And that's what I started to do was just say, like, God, I don't want to deal with that. Well, when I didn't let him clean me up and let him work on me, I began to create that bigger mess like I've talked about. And it was time and time again after compromising and complacency and just saying, I'll just do this one time. I can ask for forgiveness or this and this and this and not letting God truly set you free from it. When you do it in your own strength, what you begin to do is give a foothold to the enemy. That's good. Yeah. Like anger. Like it says, yes. you know, if you let the sun, if you sin in your anger and you let the sun go down without telling that person like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry or, you know, anything like that, you're giving a foothold to the enemy. It's point blank. It's in, it's, it's the word of God. Yeah. But the amazing yeah. part about it is he is here to set you free from that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to live feeling guilty. Yeah. My testimony goes back to I started living in shame of just like everything that I have done, everything that I, I, a few things I did after salvation, things I did before salvation. I walked around in so much shame. But what I want to also explain is I was on fire for the Lord. The yes. Lord, I, I, I love Him. I, I, I worshiped Him. I, I went to church every Sunday. I loved going. I did all these things. Like I truly did love Him. But God was still trying to set me free from the things that I had opened 
doors yes. in my life. Yes. And I loved him, but also I was like, but God, I, stop, quit. I just don't want to talk about that. I want to just shove it under this rug. Yeah. And he's like, I've got to clean you. Like, I have to set you free. I've got to deliver you from these things because you're giving a foothold to the enemy. Yeah. Well, long story short, I battled with shame. Um, that was one of the main things that I battled with that God delivered me from. I had a spirit of shame over me. And it was like, no matter what I did, I would hear the lie of the enemy like, well, you, you know, you've already done that. Like, you know, you you like ask God for forgiveness, but like you go back and you do it again. Or like this and this and this and the enemy lies to you. But what, what God began to show me was, you know, of course, there's a difference in confessing your sin and repenting. Repenting means to yes. turn away from it, to change, to not go back to it. I wasn't truly repenting. Yeah. I was confessing, and thank, I'm so thankful for God's grace because he forgave me every time. But there comes a point where, like, you have to repent. You can't, you have to turn away from it. Yeah. You can't keep going back to the same stuff. Yeah. That's and that's what God showed me. Well, I'm, I'm going to be real and raw with y'all about this part of my story that kind of um, happened about a month ago and broke, it helped break the spirit of shame off me. But um, I'm going to be real and raw with y'all. I'm also not getting into too much detail because it is, it is, it was something very scary that happened to me. Um, but long story short, about a month ago, um, I was in the middle of the night and I got woke up by a very heavy presence, and I talk about these things all the time. I'm like, you know, these things are real. Like, like, like you know, don't like, don't be afraid of things. You have authority over them, and you do. In the name that Jesus Christ has authority over, and Jesus is in you. So, yeah. Therefore, I woke up to this very scary demonic presence, and I just remember, like, I was trying to like say, like, no, in the name of Jesus, you have to leave. But it began to overtake me, and I couldn't say it. I couldn't speak. Yeah. And I woke up the next morning, and I I went to work, and I just remember being like. My, I just couldn't lift up and couldn't see, like, like, God, why did this happen to me? Yeah. And what he began to show me was, look, you gave foothold to the enemy. But here's what I've done. I've already set you free from it. What I did on the cross yeah. was, was your freedom. Yeah. But you have to walk in this. Yes. You have to take it yeah. up, and you have to truly walk in that freedom. Yeah. It's there, but he gives you free will. You yeah. may not have to walk in it. Yeah. I mean, that, that goes good. back to you, and if you're going to choose to actually walk in the freedom. And yeah. for me, I wasn't choosing to walk in that freedom because I don't want to deal with it. And he has to deliver you. He has to set you free for you to walk in the freedom. Mm -hmm. And yes. long story short, uh, I went to my aunt that night. My aunt's like a, a mentor of mine um, that I just love. She's just very spiritual, like spiritual mother, spiritual authority in my life that I love going to. And I told her, I was like, look, like this has happened. I've opened doors for the enemy. I've given him a foothold. As Ephesians said, anger, you know, sin in your anger can do. I gave him a foothold with different things. So what began to happen was, you know, I told her, I was like, look, this happened to us now. I've got, to, I've got to get delivered from this. And I told her, you know, the things that I've done um, that I gave a foothold to the enemy for. And she looked at me and she was like, Mary, you, you got to forgive yourself. You do realize this. Like, That's you good. have so much shame. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to forgive yourself. Yeah. yeah. So through thankful, like, y'all, I can't emphasize enough. I've talked to someone. Like, for me to get delivered, I had to go talk to her and say, hey, look, I need freedom from this. There's power in talking to people. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, told her that um, about what happened to me and stuff, and she was like, you got to forgive yourself. Yeah. And I remember just crying so bad because like, I was like, how do I do that? You know, like, yes, God's forgiven me, but how do you forgive yourself from these decisions you made? Like, that's, that's not easy to do if you, if you've done anything like within my boat of knowing, like, what you've done. Like, it's not easy to forgive yourself over things that you wish you could go back and change. Yeah. And used to, I couldn't, I would never have been able to stand up here and talk about my past. I wouldn't have done it because I had a spirit of shame over me. Yeah. But now I can talk about it and say, hey, there's actually freedom in this. It doesn't matter what you've done. Yeah. That doesn't matter anymore. There's sure. freedom in it. Yeah. And um, I, I forgave myself and she prayed over me that night. And I just remember her praying and just saying, like, you know, like, God, I just pray that she sees you to, sees, sees you the way, like, he, like, God sees me. And, yeah. um, that was something I couldn't do. But with the spirit of shame over me, I couldn't see the way God truly loved me. I loved him, and I knew he loved me, but I couldn't fully see that. Yeah. I couldn't get into that full inheritance like Ephesians talks about that we have. Like, I couldn't reach a breakthrough in my life because that spirit of shame was so heavy over me. It was yeah. holding me back. And I just remember, like I said, she prayed over me, and I went home that night for the first time in... I guess like eight or nine months of salvation, I finally felt that freedom. Yeah. And I finally felt like I can share this without like worrying about what people think. I, can, I don't have the spirit of shame on me. That's why I can sit here and say something. Amen. Like I don't have that over me anymore because God has freed me from that. But Lord. only God can do that. Right. Yeah. And that's just, I mean, that's my story. But I'm going to go ahead and call Connor up here. Yep. If you don't mind, let him go ahead and play. Yep. Um, 
something I wanted to say, like, as I began, you know, praying about this, you know, God, what do you want me to say? Because ultimately, I want God to be glorified. This isn't my story. This is, this is, he used me, and I'm just a yielded vessel to him. Yeah. And we all are. But what he began to show me was he was like, hey, and he was speaking to me, and he was like, there's going to be somebody there tonight. Whenever Sunday night happens, there's going to be somebody there that feels like they, they have something to hold them back. And the way the Lord described to me was it was an addiction. So I don't know what that was. I was like, is it alcohol? Is it vaping? I don't know. But God said, somebody there has an addiction. They've been trying to seek me. But every time they take a step forward to me, something pulls them three steps back. And what he showed me was he's like, hey, they've given a foothold to the enemy, like Ephesians talks about. But I want to set them free. I want them to walk in the freedom that I've already done on the cross. Amen. And he was like, there's somebody going to be here that needs that freedom. So I don't know. I don't know who that is. All I know is God told me to say it, and I'm going to be obedient. And I believe there's power in laying hands on people Amen. and saying, no, in the name of Jesus, anxiety will leave. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, power yes. will leave. Yes. Amen. And he, was, he wanted me to say, too, whoever's been battling with this, they're mine. And I love them, but they can't see me the way that I see yeah. them because they have something yeah. Yeah. holding them back. Yeah. So... I'm not going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. There's, yes, that's amazing. But what I'm going to ask is I know that's for somebody because God told me this. And I believe there is power in laying hands on people. And in the name of Jesus, he can do these things. He can cast that out like he did me. He said, no, shame has to leave off her. She's mine. Mm-hmm. It don't matter what foothold you give in me. I have authority over that. Yeah. That's good. So if that's you, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, you have to come forward. I'm not going to say you have to. But I believe there's power in that. So. Matthew, Jacob, if y'all want to come up here, I just believe that there's some